Hey, Joseph here. As promised, I am delivering you the full review of this laptop, Asus ZenBook Pro Duo. The overall first look and the spec of this device were showcased on the previous unboxing video. So please do check it out if you haven't already and the link will be in the description. I have received this laptop from Asus for video coverage purposes but I will be returning it afterwards. Just to set the grounds, I used to daily drive a few Asus Zephyrus laptops which are more gaming laptops. However, this is my very first Asus laptop that I am doing a full review of. They seem to be consistently doing some innovative stuff on their laptop, so I was quite excited to see all of those things applied on this laptop. So there is a lot to cover. I can already feel that this video is going to be long, but stick with me as I try to be as thorough as possible. As always, I'll be focusing more on the overall user experience and usability rather than the numbers and the specs of the device that are available elsewhere. Starting from the outside of the laptop, this specific model's color is celestial blue and it does look quite professional without looking too dull. It does have this swirly pattern on it. It does capture some finger grease. I actually don't really mind this thickness on the 15 inch laptop as the corners are not necessarily squared off. It is kind of chamfered in such way. So because of this angle, it is actually quite easy to pick up from the grounds as well you can kind of lift it up like this and then pick it up if it was squared off that was going to be much more difficult you're gonna to have to pick it up with both hands and I think a lot of laptops these days have gotten too focused on the thinness of devices it is really difficult to pack a lot of performance and cooling capacity in the thin devices but I don't know if a users like you or myself can really benefit from shaving two mils out of laptops that you get your hands on anyhow the overall look of the laptop when it is closed is nothing out of ordinary but the uniqueness of the device starts to show as you open the laptop and as you open the laptop it's doing multiple things it's not just opening the device so as I open the device it will lift up the device and then pull it backwards as well as lifting the screen up so there's that again so there's a lot of things that are happening as you open the device. So it is needless to say it is well constructed and the overall hinge feels very solid and smooth. And there's not much of a wobble at all, even if you kind of flicker that way. It's actually my desk that is shaking. And when you are opening the device, the top edge of the screen is kind of slanted so you can tuck your finger in and lift it up but you just saw that the laptop kind of lifts up. So sometimes it's not as easy to do one hand opening, but as you can see, I can do it. And in most case scenario, you'll just kind of hold down the edge and open up like so. And as you can see, there's quite a lot of room between the bottom of the laptop to the angled up screen. I actually initially thought that this gap is for air venting as well, but I was proven wrong that I don't feel any air that's coming out of this gap. Rather, it is blowing all the air out of the side ventilation here as well as on this side. It does become quite warm during use when it is even on battery. I can feel just air moving from either side. I don't feel any air that is being vented either to the bottom or to the back, but moreover all through the sides. So I guess that's how this laptop is meant to be breathing. Perhaps it sucks the air through the lifted screen or through the bottom and then just vents it out to the side is what I kind of felt like that it, it is doing. And you can see that perforated panel at the bottom of the laptop and also some of the perforation on the back of the laptop over here. And the biggest feature of this laptop is the dual screen, the top one and the bottom one. I still haven't turned it on and that's actually on purpose because you can kind of see the reflection on the top screen and not as much on the bottom one. So 
you have to keep in mind that the top panel is quite glossy, but they are both OLED panels, so they are vibrant and the colors are amazing. However, the bottom screen is matte finish, therefore less amount of glare are going to come into your eyes as it is kind of lower and it is going to be prone to more of the lights that are shining from the top. So it is a good thing that they maintain this one as matte and then perhaps not apply the matte on the top screen. I don't exactly know why because I do like having a matte screen overall. However, the glossy screens do put out more clearer picture. So that may be what they are shooting for. And the overall brightness is 440 nits, so it is plenty bright. It boasts 100% DCI-P3 with the delta value less than two, and they are Pantone validated. So in terms of color accuracy, it is going to be the professional grade that you may need for your color grade stuff. And both of them are actually touch screen. It's not as common to see OLED screens that are 4K and touch screen. So they are quite unique in that way as well. And the bottom screen is obviously the half of the resolution. So basically slice the top and then just put it at the bottom and that's what the resolution that you can expect out of these two screens 4k and then another 4k down here perhaps just a half of regular 4k resolution that is a lot of pixels that this laptop is outputting. And here is a stylus that was included with this laptop. It feels comfortable to use. It is basically the same form as the Surface Pan or the Dell Pan that I'm used to. And it does seem to like it kind of magnetically attached to things. So if you have a metal surface, it does attach to. However, on the laptop, I just couldn't seem to find a way to attach. There wasn't any metal that it easily attaches to. However, if you have any metallic surface, then you can mount it. So let me just kind of demonstrate. So you can magnetically stick to a metal surface like that. So I guess you would have to carry it in the bag that was included with this laptop and there is a distinction between the front and the back button so if you press down the front button then you can just kind of delete and then if you do the back button hold then you can also select an area so there are distinctions between two and that is quite handy and is consistent to other stylus that i have used and i daily use However, there's no button on the back, so there is no way to kind of connect this and then do multiple functions to say screenshot or anything like that. However, it is comfortable to use and I have been using it without any problem. And my preference to actually write on this laptop is not through the top panel that's up here, which is great for demonstration purposes like this, but to actually move the screen to the bottom or just use your mouse to do that. Or actually there is a button short key over here. If you press that, it just snaps onto the bottom screen here. So you can just press that button to flip back and forth, which is a very easy way to control this. And I've been loving this. So you can do that and then start to write on here and it writes on this screen. So that is all very comfortable and this is my preferred way of taking notes. And then I will have other things shown here, either team chats or conference call, other type of drawings and websites that I'm looking at on the top and then write note down here during meetings and such. So it is a very easy way to do. And there are other ways that I have used this where I would use the screen grab or screenshot function like this. So I'll point out to a type of screen that's already on here. And then I'll go to that screenshot that I have taken and notice how that screenshot showed up on the bottom. And then I'll circle certain area and then point to it and then send this screenshot to somebody. Hey, what is going on over here? 
it's kind of hard to see on the camera. So let's go ahead and move that. So, hey, I can change this to a different color. So on this part of the screen, this is not really working. And then you just copy that screenshot to the team chat or email so that you just kind of point out. And this needs to be addressed immediately. You can just write that sort of thing. So all of this is quite easy. You can have other documentation tools such as Adobe Acrobat or OneNote or Bluebeam review so that you look at the drawings and then comment directly with the pen input, the stylus input, and do a lot of note taking and also red line commenting on the drawing itself. And it is a valuable tool. It becomes so easy to do on this massive screen as well as the one that is on the bottom. You can actually show the reference drawing or the 3D model on the top so that you can quickly look at it and then do red lines and comments on the bottom. And in overall experience, the palm rejection was quite nice on this device. So even if I go between touching and writing with the pen a lot, it didn't really have problem distinguish between my palm versus my finger and then the pen. It was quite snappy and all kind of fluid. So I did not have that problem and you can comfortably rest your palm onto the screen. There were a few occasions where it had missed, but I think it is actually application dependent. So depending on type of application that you use, it may or may not reject the palm as well. But in this case, the OneNote rejects it quite well and I have no problem resting my hand and writing away whatever the note that I need to on the device. And officially the name of the bottom panel here is called ScreenPad Plus and you can toggle it on and off by pressing one of the button down here on top of the touchpad. And the first one here is to turn on ScreenPad Plus. And the second one is to hide. And then the third one is to turn it off altogether. And if you do, then the bottom panel, the ScreenPad Plus kind of goes off. And the difference between hiding versus off is the fact that there is a floating window. So if you had the OneNote open on this screen, you can just kind of hide it so that it is not consuming that extra amount of screen brightness and the pixels that you need to turn on. However, it is there so it doesn't mess up any of the setups of windows that you already had, like the 3D model on top and OneNote at the bottom. If you were to turn it off, then the Windows 10 or the OS will push everything to the main screen, therefore it'll get all jumbled up. However, if you just hide it, then that doesn't happen and you can just quickly toggle it on then it will just come right up. So, so that control is available for you. Obviously it has a little bit of delay as you just saw, but you can go back and forth easily with the button that is down here, as well as turning the ScreenPad Plus on and off and also hiding it. So it is quite well thought out in that regard how to control things. And even if you have the OneNote up here and if you wanna push it down, you can press that button or as you float around, you'll notice that there is a little icon that shows up and then I can hover over there to maximize the screen both top and bottom. or you can also go to this button here and then it will just snap it to the bottom. And then same thing appears on the bottom here. So I can just snap it on like that and then it'll just push it right up. And as I hover, there are a couple of configuration that I can go to. So there are more controls available. It is quite intuitive in regards to what I wanna do. So perhaps take over the half of the screen and I can do that easily. So you can perhaps have like a music player on one side and the team or some sort of messenger or some sort of chat onto the right so that you kind of look at it occasionally as you model and do work on the bigger screen. So those controls are available for you and they have been quite useful for me. So when you're doing 3D modelings or drawings like this, and then you can have it on the main screen so that it is easy to view and you just work away on the screen. And then the reference material perhaps on the bottom half of the screen so that you can have a look at it 
or keep a note of things that you are needing to do or check off the things that you have already done. And then perhaps look at emails on the other half or have a video like this playing so that you can watch my videos whilst you are doing the work. Or you can also look at other type of tutorials to learn how to do certain type of tasks. And you can perhaps have some sort of music player down here. And there are controls that are also available on the side of the screen. I actually moved it from the left to the right since I prefer in there, but you can set those things up differently with the settings button and also change the brightness of the screen. So all of those controls are available. So this is sort of an example of how I would go about setting up my screens. And again, you can kind of come up with your own setup depending on what you do and how you work. But yeah, I find this sort of setup really useful. There is a control panel that's available for you for certain type of applications such as Photoshop or Premiere Pro, which allows you to touch input a certain type of value easily on this screen here on the screen pad plus and then control things that are on the main screen. However, I jump between machines quite a lot. So having a particular workflow and then not available on another desktop that I'm going to work in was quite disruptive for my overall workflow. Therefore, I decided not to do that. But if you're the type of person who uses primarily just a single laptop, and if you use those applications who can benefit from the control panel a lot, then you can certainly use them. So your mileage may vary depending on what you do. So these are all great features of this laptop that I was able to benefit from. However, the biggest downside of having dual screen and a lot of resolution is the fact that the battery life tends to suffer. Driving 4K OLED screen for a long time is no easy task and it has two or maybe one and a half. So that is a criteria that I looked at whilst trying to test out the laptop. When I was doing light tasks like email writing and then watching videos and the note taking, it lasted about four hours and 15 minutes. And then it lasted about one and a half hours when I was doing 3D modeling and a lot of renderings. However, your mileage may vary depending on type of task that you do. So just be sure to keep in mind that it is not going to last a very long time, but four hours on a double screen laptop like this is quite impressive. So you can go through a lot of meetings if you needed to. So if you're just taking this laptop for note taking purposes, it's going to take care of you. And because it has two screens, another aspect that I found quite annoying is the fact that the regular taskbar position, I tend to put the Windows taskbar to the side. So I would normally do that. And I think that for this laptop, that makes sense as well. However, the regular Windows 10 test bar position is at the bottom. Therefore, if you're trying to press the start button, you can either press it like that, or you're going to have to drag your mouse across to the corner. And then when you are about there, and I have sort of the muscle memory to go to the very corner, and then you're just going to miss it because you're going to continue downwards and then land somewhere on this bottom panel here. So I guess that is something that you're going to be bumping into as you try to land your click onto the test bar here or to the right. But it may not be big of a concern if you were to move that to the side or if you're type of person who doesn't click on test bar as often. But yeah, I just wanted to mention that. So if you resort to moving the test bar to the side, so I can just drag that up to the side like so, then all of those problems would go away actually. So I would just leave it like that. But when you move up to Windows 11, then I guess you're out of those options as well. Anyways, let's go ahead and discuss about the keyboard of this laptop. Overall, the keyboard experience is excellent. I have no problem quickly typing away any of the keys on a keyboard and actually, they have included this palm rest that you can just attach to the keyboard like so, and then becomes a comfortable area for you to rest your palm on and just kind of lifts you up a bit. And this becomes really, really comfortable. Although I can't imagine myself 
carrying this around so if you were to just type away without it and then your palms gonna rest on the table and this is about yay much elevated off and therefore the typing isn't as comfortable but actually there is additional feature to this palm rest which is a little plastic strip that's included there and there is a light that lights up depending on the performance mode that you are in and you can turn that on and off and when you are charging the device that also turns on and changes color as well and all of that color will actually appear on the top here as you attach which is a kind of neat thing that they have done so if you were to attach this like that and then turn that on and off then that light will turn on and off here it's kind of hard to tell because of the light and kind of neat i thought and i actually wrote out the entire outline of this video on this keyboard therefore i did some typing on this keyboard however there's no major issues that i have faced only a few minor things that i do want to point out is the fact that the top row of the keyboard where the escape key is or the delete key is is quite short or narrow so it is actually not that that easy to hit the escape key or the delete key all that often they're usually not that big however as a 3d modeling or cad user we hit escape key a lot and it is on the corner with a tiny little button and i can easily miss that and just hit another key down here or the f1 instead so yeah i wish it was kind of bigger and i don't entirely know why the bottom bezel of this bottom screen is so thick so perhaps if you were to thin that out and then make the top row a bit bigger perhaps not the full size but a bit bigger or maybe escape key a little bit bigger than what it is currently then it would have been a little bit better but because of all of this hinge mechanism that's inside of the screen pad plus or the bottom panel perhaps you needed that large chin that's typical on all screens where you have the larger chin and that's true for this top panel or any of the monitor that I have owned. I guess that I don't have a good solution in that, but that's something that I have noticed that I wanted to report to you. I also know the fact that because there's no palm rest that's included on this laptop, since this is all detachable and you carry around laptop without an actual palm rest, this may or may not be preference for you. Obviously, there's no room to fit a attached palm rest to this device other than increasing the size of the laptop massively. So yeah, that may kind of put you off a bit, especially if you were trying to ride on the surface without the any of the palm rests, then it's gonna be quite uncomfortable. And actually because of that, if you were to put the laptop on your lap, and if you were to ride away, my legs aren't as long and I'm quite a short person. Therefore, if I were to have it up, then I'll have my laptop right up against my body like so. And that's typically how people use their laptop on their lap. And because the laptop itself is so up against your body, it's gonna be very uncomfortable writing on the keyboard like this. And I have bigger tummy to just protrude out even further. So it sets me apart that way too. So that's something to be considered. It's not as lapable or laptop a bull. I guess you can still type away and kind of see the characters, but it's not gonna be as comfortable. And actually one of the user of this laptop on the unboxing video comment left that this riser or I don't know what you call this, uh, attached stand that I was kind of endeavoring with on my unboxing video to be quite useful and ergonomically comfortable. So I'll actually give this a try. So I'll actually give this a try. So open this up and then there is a short instruction which I may glance at, but I kind of figured this one out last time. So if you were to flip the laptop around and then put it somewhat like this. So let's peel this and then line it up like this perhaps and then make sure it's straight and I'm also making sure I'm centered so that it doesn't cover any of the perforations. And I think that is it. So just commit to it. 
can see that the sides have stuck onto the bottom of the laptop and then this is kind of magnetic so it just kind of folds and then there's a gentle sort of snap to it and then you can basically push this up and then fold like this and it stays in that position because of the magnet and then you can just lay it down like that and it creates this additional angle for the laptop and then yeah that's actually looking quite nice and actually because of this angle even without this included palm rest it is able to angle in a way that it is comfortable to type i can rest my palm onto the table and it is slight lift like that where it makes it feel like it is sort of the even surface yeah i like that so you know since you can't log this around all the time perhaps you can attach the included stand like that to lift it up perhaps it's even helpful for ventilation and yeah i can easily type away with this if you didn't have that so if i were to make it flat if i were to rest my palm here it is not as comfortable to type since my palm is so below the deck of the laptop so i kind of crunch like this instead of writing like that so that is quite weird when i'm typing away but if i were to lift this and again snap like that this becomes a lot more comfortable thank you for that comment so i get to try this out increasing the ergonomics of the laptop and yeah this is easily snappable or f like flatly stored so when you close a laptop it doesn't add any in terms of the bulk and yeah it's it's proven to be something that's quite useful fine we'll move away from the keyboard let's look at the touchpad that's on the corner of the laptop here and it is on the corner not at the bottom since again we ran out of the room to fit this screen here anyways i really like the touchpad on the right corner of the laptop perhaps it's because i'm a right-handed person who uses the touchpad with right hand and also i tend to use mouse most of the time when i'm doing professional work so i'll always have a mouse with me so when i'm using a mouse and resting my left hand on the keyboard i don't want to be fighting over that touchpad often it doesn't have as good of a palm rejection or it doesn't have a, as big of a resting place for me to rest my hand on therefore having one that is just completely off to the side either it just stays out of my way or just comfortably to be used with my right hand since i don't have to do this it's i don't know somewhat awkward to have your keyboard down here and then go like this to do the touches and then go back up and it was just i don't know this motion here and it was just all comfortable to go right and then do the touchpad and then right and touchpad i don't have to go under and over so i don't know at least in my opinion this works for me and i prefer this option but again i know that's going to put some of people who use the touchpad with left hand so i understand it's going to be sort of a mixed bag but in terms of the feature of this touchpad there is actually a subtle icon that's on the top left and top right the top right is a one famous where you can kind of hold down to turn on the number keys that shows up with these fine lines so you can actually tap on these numbers to input the number and i actually really like the fact that you can tap on those numbers to input number in addition to you can just drag around like this to just move your cursor around and also you can press it down to cause the clicks so this becomes really easy even if you have that turned on all the time and you can actually control the brightness by holding the top left button like that if you hold it down then the brightness changes so you can go brighter or sort of more dimmed if you would like that's where i kind of leave it as or if you were to actually swipe from that button then the calculator shows up i don't know if that was all clear so let me try that again so close that and then if you swipe from that button then a calculator will show up so this is sort of a hidden feature apparently or it wasn't as 
obvious. So I have used that many times since I do a lot of number inputs and calculation for architectural work that I do. So I have used that to bring up calculator quite often. But in terms of actual number inputs, it is a bit of a mixed bag because there's no sort of feedback. It doesn't even highlight as I look at it and then press down those numbers. I don't know if I have to look at it, then I rather look at the button that I know for sure I am pressing here. I'm not sure if I just tapped in between eight and nine versus eight or seven. There's no way to tell until I type away and then look up to make sure that I have typed on a correct number. So that becomes a little bit difficult and there's no physical feedback. So if I were to look up on the screen and then type away, then I'm not gonna be able to land the correct clicks because there's no way to tell between the buttons. So it's not as practical. It is cool. It's really cool feature that you can double up your touchpad with the number pad. However, in actual practice, I don't feel it is as practical. So let's go ahead and look at something else other than down here. So going up to here is the webcam. So in order to use that, I'm just gonna bring up the camera app on Windows 10. And here is the webcam. Yeah, that's what it looks like. And let's go ahead and record so that you can also hear the microphone quality of this webcam. So in actual video, this is what the webcam looks like. I'm just looking at myself over here, whereas the webcam is up there. So I can look at the webcam and talk like this. And then perhaps what you're hearing right now is through the microphones of this laptop. And this is the quality that you can expect out of this laptop's webcam, which is not terrible, but yeah, obviously it's not gonna blow you out of the water. And this is a microphone quality of this laptop webcam. And this laptop's webcam does have IR camera, therefore you can utilize Windows Hello out of this one. And they also use the IR camera to calculate better lighting and enhance the image in the low light situations for your correct exposure. And let's do a bit of speaker test. And actually they do boast a good quality speaker. So let's go ahead and test that. That. At least to my ears, it really did sound good and good amount of bass as well. But I'll leave the final judgment to you as I don't necessarily listen to speakers all that much and in terms of the fan noise i don't know if you heard any but whilst i'm doing these sort of light tests the fan isn't really on and you do notice some heat that is coming from the side but the device overall is very well maintained however i can turn on the different fan mode by pressing this button i can cycle between the standard mode versus the performance mode and if i were to go to the performance mode the fan do turn up a bit but it is not really audible in the battery usage situation. So if you're doing heavy tests, yes, the fan will kick on. However, it is not sort of the whiny noise. It is sort of the soft whirring sound. Therefore, it was actually quite well managed in terms of the noise and the thermal as well. And in terms of charging, I have mentioned or kind of showcase this overall charger. The charger is actually not different or any smaller or bigger from other type of manufacturers. However, it is a 240 watt. I kind of noticed this sort of neat writing that's included here. And also it is sort of the squarey shape with the L turn here. So you can kind of minimize the overall bulk of the charger. And I really like the fact that there is a shorter cable for the charger brake to the wall. So you don't have to carry as much thick cable in your bag and this was a lot more luggable than other type of big chargers that are available. However, I have tested 
everything to see if the USB-C is able to charge the laptop or not. However, both of the USB-C ports that are on the side, both are Thunderbolt 3 ports. However, I was not able to charge a laptop via these ports. So you cannot charge this device via USB-C. Therefore, in order for you to charge up your device, you're gonna have to carry around this big charger. And when you actually connect the charger, there is a LED indicator on the side that lets you know whether the laptop is on or charging. And then you can also notice the additional lighting that's available at the bottom front. That's the one that lets up and transmit it through the trackpad here. Anyways, yeah, that is all visible down here. It's just telling you that it is charging. It goes from the red to green right now. I think it's yellow a little bit, letting you know that it is 90% or something like that. But I've seen it change color. Also in the performance mode, it'll go from that color to blue like that. And I don't think I have disclosed the overall spec of this device. I apologize for that. The CPU is Intel Core i9-10980HK CPU, which is the high spec. Actually, the 11th generation is up for release very soon, so do look out for that. But the current unit that I have is a 10th generation CPU top spec for the laptop, so it is a quite powerful one. And it does have 32 gigabytes of RAM for the memory, so it is a top of the end spec for that one as well. And in terms of storage, it is one terabyte of storage. And in terms of graphics card, it is NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3070. So that in a simple terms is basically this laptop is a very performant laptop that is capable of handling a lot of stuff that you throw at. And in terms of actual benchmark here, and first we're gonna have a look at the Enscape benchmark. It is able to go a lot faster than RTX 2080 Super Series that I have seen and also it is even faster than 2080 Super that I had and it is because of its additional ray tracing capabilities and DLSS features that it is able to utilize and if we were to move on to the Lumion benchmark and you can see that it is on par with other type of 30 series graphics card and it is much better than RTX 2080 Super Max-Q variant and it is slightly less than 2080 Super that I have. And if we were to move up to V-Ray CPU render, which is a CPU bound rendering. And in terms of the CPU benchmark, it's needless to say that it is very capable since it is equipped with i9. However, it was scoring slightly less than some of the most recent generation of CPUs that are available in the market as well as some other laptop that had the same exact CPU in it. And if we move up to V-Ray GPU rendering, you can see that it has scored quite a lot and it is basically on par with other type of 3070 that I was able to test out and it is scoring much better than any of the previous generation of graphics cards. If we move up to the Revit benchmark that's been provided by Bimbox and you can see that it is able to do all the tasks quite quickly as a lot of tasks are CPU bound and it is able to outperform my desktop and you be able to handle those tasks without any problem. And if we go to Blender CPU benchmark, you can see that it is on par with same exact CPU on other laptop. And if we move on to the Blender GPU benchmark, you can see that it is on par with other graphics card that was in other laptop as well. So it is pretty consistent result here. So overall, it is telling the story of, yes, this laptop is a very capable laptop for typical type of tasks that we do as architectural designer or any interior designer or anyone who's related to the AEC industry. So let's talk about the pricing a little bit on this laptop since we talked about the specification and the performance 
of this laptop. If you were to try and get the exact same spec of this laptop, which has been topped out with every single thing, you're gonna have to spend about $4,000 and that is actually MSRP and if you were to go to Amazon you can get this laptop for $3,300. Yeah that is still a lot and you certainly do not need to have the top of the line spec and the next tier down that I can find is a i7 version of this laptop 16 gigabytes of the RAM the very same RTX 3070 card and it still has one terabyte of SSD and it lists about $1,000 less so this one is $2,400 so you can start to tear down in terms of the spec of the laptop and for $2,400 it is a lot of money but and I think that is actually quite a good price for the amount of performance that you get out of this machine and considering the fact that you get dual screen and the amount of hardware that is fit inside of this laptop yeah that is current listing of that laptop on Amazon with some discounts that are available depending on the season so perhaps look for holiday sales and Black Fridays that sort of thing so yeah uh, that is all I have to say about this laptop so if you have found this video useful then please don't forget to like this video and I'll leave the link in the description for you guys to go ahead and purchase if you feel like this laptop is suitable for your own workflow and please subscribe to my channel to continue watching these type of videos Thank you so much for watching as always. I'll see you next time. Bye.